Hi, and happy Monday. It's Kurt here from City Campus, and uh, welcome to another day of our devotional messages. As we continue to go through the New Testament, and we're kind of in the second half of the New Testament right now, is we're starting to talk about um, three letters that I would call Paul's pastoral letters. He starts to uh, write to fellow ministers in the faith, people he's mentored, and now are working separately from him. Uh, Paul's in prison. And he's writing these letters to uh, uh, his friends, Timothy and uh, Titus. I, I think of my friend, Carl Summers, and uh, I think of, if he was writing to me, this might be the kind of letters he would write to me. And even though I'm certainly not a young minister, but Carl's uh, quite, uh, quite an older man. And uh, I could see him writing the same thing to me. It's kind of exciting to think of that. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look and see what uh, Paul had to write to Timothy. Well, we continue to go through these Older Testament, or Older, Old Testament, New Testament uh, books, and we're into book number 15, which is First Timothy. And uh, it's written by Paul. Again, uh, we're, we're coming into the last uh, week of Paul. So these, this week will be Paul's letters. And uh, we'll, we'll hear from his, he'll see, see his three pastoral letters. And then we'll see a letter he just writes to a guy. I don't know if we call it a pastoral letter. And then we'll see a letter that it's disputed over whether Paul wrote it. So uh, that's what we'll be seeing this week. Uh, our main theme of First Timothy is that a pastor is advising a younger pastor. And we're going to kind of see that to be more or less the theme of the next three books that we're going to talk about, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus. It's really a book about leadership. And in chapter one, Paul introduces a subject that is near and dear to his heart, and that's false teaching. And, uh, and false teaching is being introduced in many churches at this time. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of false teaching surrounds having to obey Jewish laws before becoming a Christian. Uh, some of them are starting to see some uh, false teaching of where they're saying that Jesus wasn't a real human being on earth. And, um, or in some cases, it's just some teaching about the fact that you need to observe certain days and certain times and so on and so forth. And Paul just wants to fight against that. He wants to focus on the gospel, the, the, the free gift of, of God to us is salvation through Jesus Christ. And he wants to focus on that trustworthiness and the minister's role in communicating that. In chapters two and three, it's really a church stuff section. Uh, chapter two is basically about how men and women should act in church. And some of this is perhaps a bit, uh, um, what do you want to call it, cultural. Um, women in those days were not really part of major society. And uh, sometimes they were, uh, they were much elevated in the Christian church compared to uh, other parts of society. And sometimes women got a little bit uh, disruptive. And so uh, that there's a little section there. You can read about it. Um, not sure that that necessarily applies directly to today, but I think in general it applies to all of us that we shouldn't be disruptive in a church environment. And then there's a whole chapter about the leaders' roles in church settings, uh, elders and deacons, or uh, we call them, we also call them presbyteros or leaders. They're, they're these leaders. And then these slaves or servants, which we call deacons today. Um, and again, you'll see those, those roles if you look in those two chapters. Uh, chapter four, we're back to talking a little bit about false teaching. And again, how the minister is to explain things to people. There's a really interesting part in four, which we're going to read here in a second, about how the fact that he wants Timothy to be aware that his youth, he's clearly younger than the bulk of his uh, congregation. And he wants him to understand that his youth has nothing to do with his ability to explain the, the gospel to them and to, uh, to pastor them. Um, how various people should be in the church is chapter five. It talks about widows. It talks about young unmarried women, elders, how we treat them, how they should treat us, those kinds of things. And then in chapter six, um, he talks about teaching. 
mostly about teaching. Make sure Timothy knows that he, Timothy, should teach and how to do that. And then especially avoiding foolish discussions. If you've talked with me much, you'll notice I'm not really willing to talk about politics with you, for example. <laughs> Uh, it's foolish, you know, there's, there's just no, uh, there's no end to it and there's no fix to it. And I think there's plenty of other things, you know, I'm, I'm probably not going to fight you on whatever you think is going to happen in the end times. I kind of know what I think. Um, I don't teach about that too much, um, mostly because I think there's some, some uh, pretty strong uh, latitude on what the Bible teaches about it. And I don't think we know very well probably because that's the way the Bible wants it to be. And um, so I try to avoid those discussions for the most part. Uh, I always think when somebody is uh, wants to talk, the first thing they want to talk about is what's going to happen at the end. I always want to focus them back on Jesus. And, and sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> but... Um, but that's disappointing, foolish discussions is part of that. A couple of verses I found and got like too many ones in there, but 4, 11 through 13 says this of First Timothy. Teach these things and insist that everyone learn them. Don't let anybody think less of you because you're young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. Until I get there, focus on reading the scriptures to the church, encouraging the believers and teaching them. That's what ministers do. And that's what I strive to do every time, right? First Timothy 6 through 9 or 6, 9 through 10 says this. <clears throat> and it really is a bit of an indictment on people who let money control them. But people who long to be rich fall into temptation or are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Yeah, money can really tear you up, man. I mean, look, I live with it. I, I, want, I like money. You like money? I like money but I use money as a tool and I hope you do too. And if, if that's what you're doing, I think you're cool. And uh, I think you'll do fine. Well, um, let's go ahead and have prayer and we'll finish today. And uh, some of the ones this week will be kind of a different setting. You, you won't see my cool shower curtain or whatever you think of this is behind me. Somewhere back there is my lab. Oh, look, it's books. But, um, you know, it'll, it'll be a little different look for us this week. So, um, but we'll get a chance to see that. So uh, let's pray together. God, we love you so much. We're so thankful that we have a chance to, uh, to read your Bible. And Father, I pray that, um, I, I, I don't know, you know, what Timothy did exactly after this. We don't really know a whole lot. We know that uh, Paul had to write to him again. And uh, we're going to look at that tomorrow. But God, we, we don't know everything there is to know about Timothy, but it sounds like he was a faithful servant. I'm, I'm thankful for all the people he told about Jesus. And I'm thankful that probably one of those people eventually, one of their people that they told, that they told, that they told, eventually told me about it. And I thank you for Jesus. Thank you that he died for my sins. It's in his name I pray. Amen. And amen to you. Have a great, great day. And uh, tell somebody about Jesus today. I'm sure uh, both Paul and Timothy would be really happy if you did that. <laughs>